Hi guys and welcome back to MD Fly Fishing UK. The 2021 season is upon us. I'm hoping to get out in February and during lockdown I've been going through my bag, just refreshing things up, getting a few more flies, making sure I've got everything in it. Originally I used to start off with just a little backpack, now it's uh, grown to a, a complete large shoulder bag. But anyway, this is what I carry around with me. As you can see from the picture, it holds quite a lot of equipment. It's built up over the years, adding little bits and pieces on here and there. So we'll break it all down into logical areas and we'll go through that. When I first started fly fishing, I started off with a small box and then got a larger one and then another box and another box after that. And I ended up with about five or six boxes. And when I came to looking for a fly, it was quite troublesome because I couldn't remember which box I put it in. So I decided to put them all to one side. And I bought two airflow boxes, both double sided, and they hold about 750 flies. Very easy to find the fly you want within four turns of the box. I've tried to keep them in some kind of order. The first one being eggs and apt bloodworms, and then it moves on to dries and emerges. Uh, then it goes down onto buzzers, dry flies, and the last one is basically streamers for winter. They're all accessible and you can see a lot of flies in one viewing. All my lines are sevens. I've um, got a midge tip, top left, and then I've got an intermediate in the centre and a floating on the top right. Bottom left, very good. Um, seven shooting head, floating, and then I've got a fast sinking uh, bottom right. It's all I use. In one of my little bags within the bag, I've got an, an assortment of... Tippet material, leader material, call it whatever you wish. Sometimes I'll just run a straight 12 foot 8 pound fluorocarbon. Uh, there's some eagle text on there, which is quite good. It's low diameter. It's only about 0.25, but it's about 16 pound in strength. And it actually sinks a little bit underneath the surface. So you don't have to put any mud on it to degrease it. And then for the rivers, I've got sight free and at the top, I've got Site3 G4, which is about £12. Use that in accordance with streamers. But mix and match it, depending on what fly I've got. Strike indicators or bungs, call them what you wish. Very useful on still waters and also on rivers. I do have some Euro leaders and slinky leaders. But these I mainly use on the still waters. Bottom left, designed especially for, there for a, a single buzzer. And then some larger strike indicators for two or three flies at a time. And I've always found on still waters, when I've got the strike indicator out there, the trout sometimes pop up and have a go at it. So top left hand corner, I've got some competition bungs and they've actually got a small hook in them, uh, which again is debarbed. And I've had some decent trout on them. They've ignored the flies underneath and gone straight for that. So that paid off well. When you catch a prize fish, you need to know how much it weighs. So I bought one of these, cost about six, seven quid off the internet. Works off a double A battery, works out in pounds or kilograms. Very easy to use. Used it once or twice, but I've not gone over 10 pounds with it yet. Next thing in the bag, I always hooked to my jacket. Nice long pair of forceps. If the trout takes a fly and it goes down its throat, you can easily get it out. Also, the inner part is quite flat, so if you haven't got a debarbed hook, then you can crunch down the barb using the inner part of these forceps. The next thing I use is a little straightening pad. The rubbered area, which is the dark coloured one, put your line between it, your leader, and then just gently crush it and then pull it through. It takes out all the kinks in it to keep it nice and straight seen a lot of people with these little nippers for taking tag ends off and cutting lines when you're extending leaders. I just get a good old pair of nail cutters. A little bit more heavy duty, apply a little bit more pressure if you wish. But they do the job, they only cost a quid. Next two items, top one is a priest, got a nice little bit of weight to it so you can dispatch your fish quickly and humanely. And the bottom one is a spoon for uh, placing inside the fish's stomach to find out what it's been eating on. If it's the first one you've caught, then fair enough, you might have been lucky, it just took you off like it's seen it. But if you can match what it's eating, then you're going to get a lot more fish. 
a few more accessories I carry in the bag. Most of it is due to um, keeping leaders under the surface and flies on the surface. But we'll go through these individually. This stuff's called line slick. I apply it to all my floating lines. It aids greater casting distance and also enables the line to float higher in the water. It's a little bit like Vaseline, but it's really good stuff. Check out the Sunray website for more information on it, but I like it. Good old trusty gink. Keep your flies high in the water. Only thing is, when you use it, my little tip, put it on the back of your hand and then holding the hook of the fly, dab the fly in the substance and then wipe your back of your hand. Carry on fishing. I see too many people using the fingers, rubbing it in with the fingers. What do you do after that? You're handling the line, you're handling your leader and before you know it, the substance is all over your line, your leader, your tip it, defeats the object. Another good little accessory is line sink. It's a grey paste in a small tub. I put it on a cloth and then just run it down the length of the leader and the tip it takes off the shine and degreases your leader so it's not prominent on the surface. Another floatant I use is liquid silicon but I apply this the night before I'm going to the water. If I've got some big dry flies I want to ensure a float, unscrew the cap at the top, put the fly in, put the screw cap back on, turn it upside down, unscrew it, take the fly out and allow to dry. Because it's a, a liquid you need to let the, the fly dry out first and I leave it overnight. It's good stuff. Weatherby's dry fly floatant powder. Apply it to the fly before you cast it out and again after a while when the fly has become wet shake off the moisture, reapply the powder, fly goes back out, floats nicely. I mainly use it on rivers. There's a, a video on exactly how to use it um, with on the channel as well. So that's what's in my bag for 2021. Um, some of my videos just lately are just what I've got and what I like. I can't actually get out to any waters to do any fishing. So I apologise for not uh, having any fishing videos, but hopefully that will all change very soon. So again, thanks very much for watching.